Hey everybody, what's going on? Just going to do a quick update video on my garage and then I'm going to try to do show you some tips and tricks or whatever for installing soffit and fascia. Uh, let's see, I got my garage doors put in. I mean, they're not bad looking for used garage doors. They got a couple little scuffs here. Oh well, no, that's actually my marks for my uh, locking handle. But a couple little scuffs and stuff here. They're not they're in pretty decent shape, really. Uh, this one does have a... A cracked torsion spring. I don't know if you can see there's a crack in the torsion spring right up in here somewhere. And it's gonna go, it's gonna break pretty soon. If you can see where that's just deformed right there. So that's not gonna make it too many more revolutions, but I have a replacement torsion spring ready to go. I'm gonna hopefully replace it before uh, it breaks, but I gotta get some other stuff done first. Got a couple windows popped in here. I have had those purchased a long time ago. Just got them in from uh, Lowe's. They're just some uh, cheap vinyl windows, really. And got an entry door back here. I was actually just gonna put some uh, temporary gutters on here just to get some the water running away from the building, especially on the back side. And I'm just gonna slap some old whatever gutter I could get my hands on because it was splashing down here and splashing all over and washing mud down into my gravel I had to hand dig it out I'm gonna put some uh, drain pipe in here and connect my gutters to it my downspouts but I ended up just putting going the whole way putting soffit and fascia and everything and gutter I'll put some temporary downspouts kicking out here for a few days until I get my actual drain stuck in here I'll just turn the corner put a drop down here then run it down through here and then I'll put the other drop coming down this side and then have it shooting down over the hill here. But uh, when we do our soft and fascia, we always build an end box here most of the time. I know some people they bring their soffit just straight down here and then they put a little flat piece of something in here. But uh, this is just the way I was taught to do it and I, I like the way it looks really in the end. It puts a nice little box here. Basically, we just nail two by six or whatever. The steeper your roof is, the wider of a piece of a wood here. Like if you got a 12-12 pitch, you might need like a two by 10 or something coming out here. <laughs> just run it level out here. Fill it with a little triangle piece here. And this is a really critical spot to get it really level because it's really noticeable once it's all finished off. Uh, this has a, a return bend here. It adds a really nice... Uh, finish end here underneath your soffit and it adds a ton of strength to the uh, to the under piece of your fascia right here because if you just run if it just bends straight in here one and if you just have if you don't do this return bend you have a raw edge of aluminum sticking out here and it's really weak and it can ripple over time and just this just it gives a it's a much nicer job this way so it, it just takes a couple extra minutes of time and literally you can see the return bend right here it takes like a half an inch of metal so uh and then we just put f channel here right here is notched out though for the blocking but the rest of the way down there it has f channel i'll show you what f channel is here's a full chunk it's called f channel because it looks like an f it gets nailed up along just flat along the wall and I had to measure up one and three sixteenths of an inch for this uh, specific F channel to have it to have it come in level. And then I just snap a line down along the whole wall, snap a line down there, an inch and three sixteenths up to keep it all nice and level coming in. Then the soffit tucks into the F channel. And then the aluminum fascia right here goes on the outside and then it holds up the F channel on the outside. So for better or for worse, I didn't have a ton of uh, loose roofing nails or siding nails to put my soffit up with. Now I would never ever ever do this on long pieces of soffit or long pieces or any siding or anything. This is just, these are like 11 and 5 eighths of an inch pieces of soffit. They're not going to grow and shrink a lot. I put them up with a piece with a staple gun and it was it was quick and easy really because pretty much 
they're just spanning like uh, they got about a 10 inch span here they're not going to sag it's held here with the s channel it's held out here with the soft or with the fascia and the uh the staple just hold it in place so it was really quick and really easy what i'm going to do today and i'll show you how i do this a little bit later uh we're gonna i'm gonna run a piece of the f channel straight down here put my soffit in and then put the fascia coming down the gable end and we'll put these box cover these boxes up with aluminum okay so i got my f channel coming down the gable ends and i'm going to be cutting my soffit pans for coming out here i also have a small piece of aluminum bent up here well i'll start at the top and work my way down i'll start with two full ones up here and every piece of soffit has a vent right in it so it goes solid vent solid right in each piece of soffit so i'll put two full ones up here and butt them tight this piece of aluminum helps seal this off and if they ever separate a little bit they'll still be white exposed up underneath here now at the end right here f channel comes up a little bit short my last piece of soft it'll come down and i'll bend a little return right down here and then this will get covered up with aluminum and it'll help finish everything off all right i got all my soffit pans cut for this side i cut them about a quarter inch shorter so you don't want them hanging out past your fascia board then it runs into your aluminum fascia and just causes a nightmare uh, this is my little homemade jig I made. It's specific for this saw. I basically use a paneling saw blade and a little stop thing I made here. Just measure out. I can just set my saw in here. I can butt my tape measure into the saw blade and measure out how far I want my soffits and screw this little board down. A little stop gauge. And then just run my saw through here. It's nice and square. But uh, if you ever do something like this, uh, just run your saw nice and slowly, especially the colder it is, the more brittle the saw off it'll be. Take your time, cut it slowly. It'll be way faster than using a pair of snips, but if all else fails, you can cut them with snips. Okay, so here's what I'm talking about, my two pieces of saw to start with. I'll just come up here and meet up here. Nice and square. Okay, so I got the first two installed here. Just got a little soffit nail holding these ends up so they don't flop down. Eventually the face is just going to hold those up. And like I said, don't, don't ever do this on long pieces of soffit or on siding or anything. And this is the first time I've ever done this. But staple them in there. It actually is really quick and it seems... I don't see why it won't work. I mean, it is working. I'm going to run each of these rows down here and then I'll be putting the face on. Okay, so here's one finished gable. I uh, got all the soffits run down, the faces on. Here, I'll show you how I bend these outside boxes. Uh, one thing I could do is, this is a matter of preference right here. I could easily trim those little pieces right there and make it a 45 miter. I sort of like the straight look. And it's not, the, it, if you wanted the miter, that would be really easy to do, so. Take you inside here, show you how I bend a couple of these boxes. So basically, I'm going to measure up from here to here. And I'm going to make exactly the same here when I nailed this last piece of soffit on here. Bent this down, I nailed this on and made sure that it was the same distance across here. So I'll measure here, make it the same across here. And I'm going to make one, just take one piece of regular fascia. Probably going to be about two foot total. Should go about a foot in each direction. Got 12 inches here and 12 inches out there. So I'll cut a piece of fascia off at 24 inches. I'm going to trim the one side down to this length. And then this side I'm going to let fly run wild up here. So that my when my gable piece of soffit, or not soffit, when my gable piece of fascia comes down here, it'll overlap that. So that'll be tucked up underneath to help rain, keep the rainwater coming down on the fascia. Okay, so I'm going to cut my piece off the full length right here. This time you're cutting, if you can do your scoring on the back side, it's, uh, it just makes a nicer, cleaner break on the outside. So I'll do my scoring back here. Square mark.
And now when you break this off here, it leaves just a little bit of a nicer edge on the outside. I'm a hair long maybe. I can trim that off a little bit if necessary. So my piece ended up measuring on the on that inside part where I was measuring. It's three and nine sixteenths up and a foot long on this way. But I'm gonna do my cutting again from the back side here. So I gotta come this direction, 12 inches. And up on the inside, three and nine sixteenths. And now I'm gonna, I need to bend this right here at a 90 degree. I'm gonna score the inside of this just very lightly. Not, I'm hardly gonna put any pressure. I'm just gonna just basically just scrape the paint a little wee bit here. That's gonna help that make a nice clean bend on it. Now if you do that too hard, the aluminum is gonna crack. Just do a really light score. I need to square up right here. Now this is the part that's gonna be tucking underneath. So I'm gonna miter that back just a little bit. Not at a 45, just a slight miter. I want this up underneath. I'm gonna give that a little bend. Make a little cut here. That'll let that come together nicely. Now this is where I'm going to cut an inch and a quarter of this off. This is an inch and a quarter this way, so I'm going to cut an inch and a quarter of this return bend, and that will let that go together nicely. And I'm going to do it on this end as well. This is where it will go on the outside, out towards the gutter. Again, bend that up little score there that'll break right off now it's just a single layer and this is where I was showing you if I wanted to I could miter that back easily and have a miter effect to it that's personal preference so now I'm gonna make my bend here get this bent up in a 90 place a framing square right along that little line I scored and I'm not gonna butt it in tightly here I'm gonna leave enough space inside of here for this piece to bend up into they make little hand brakes and stuff for some of this type of bend, but if you don't have one, this is a nice way to do it as well. Just take it slow. This is where when you cut that little extra out there, you can sort of push it a little bit beyond. Now what you don't want to do, especially when it's scored, is start wiggling that back and forth because it'll crack for sure. I got a pretty decent little bend here without a break. Just framing square. And that'll go together. Right there is that little notch I was showing you about. It lets these two pieces go together nicely. Okay, so here is where these returns coming around the end help out a lot. My piece is just a whisker shy. This is where I need a head, a head mount for my GoPro. When I put this up here, it's just a oh, probably a 30 second shy. But that return, I got nice white. I still have nice and white right around there. So I'll put a little silicone along the bottom here. I'll put a couple tacks up in here. This is a small piece. It's not going to expand and contract a ton. So it'll get a couple of nails. But I'll start here and I'll work my way around here, keeping it nice and level. So, And that's about it. Then we'll start working down with the fascia. I've also added a small piece of soffit here to keep that nice and as plumb as possible coming down here because that little return coming down is going to hold that out a little bit so i put just tack a little piece there and that'll keep it coming nice and straight down there okay so that boxing is done and i got the first piece going up the gable got the seat C cut of a uh, 412 on there and now I'll show you I'll show you how I cut this piece right here and I got my couple pieces of tape holding that on in place till that silicone dries up I got that boxing on is on that end and I'm gonna cut that seed cut part 
Okay, so I'm gonna put my framing square on here, and this is a 412 pit, so I'm gonna I'm gonna cut along the 12 side. So I'm just gonna line up the corner of that piece of face with a 12 right here and the four that'll keep my pitch running. This is a seed cut. This would be the level part. And this right over here coming up this way, that'd be your plum cut on a 412. Cause I gotta get at least 12 and 3 16 to run. That's pretty close there. That's probably about 12 and 3 8. So I should be good to go right there. I'm gonna knife along here. Square cut right up here. Now I know my horizontal runner, I already measured this, it's 12 and 3 16 this way. It's about exactly to that corner. I didn't give myself much extra. I didn't give myself any extra, it actually turned out perfect. Now this is the horizontal run, and I need a vertical run, that's just gonna be a square cut straight up. I'm gonna check the piece for fit. Then I'll be back to put some silicone on it. Got my silicone on here. I cleaned this off. And right down here where it has the potential to, to squeeze out the bottom, I just put a real thin bead along here. And hopefully that won't squeeze out the bottom. But it'll still adhere that aluminum to aluminum really well. And that's about it. That piece is installed. I just got to put the two pieces to finish up at the peak. And that'll just be uh, plum cuts on a, on a 412. Stick them on there and I'll show you the finished product. Okay, so here's my first piece that'll go on coming up the back side. Uh, got a, a little tab bent around here and this will shoot by the peak a little bit. Well, that much really. And then the other one will get plum cut here and it'll overlap this. If there's any shrinkage or moving, there's always going to be white underneath it. So, Well, that's a wrap for the day. Got all the uh, soffit and fascia done up on this other gable. So, looks pretty good. I don't know if anybody here is a sheet metal worker or anything, want to critique my work, how it turned out. That's about as good as I could do, really. And also today I trenched out and dug all that back out. All the muddy gravel, put a drain pipe in here. And I'm putting some places for, for my downspout drops to go in, but you know, I have one more downspout drop right, right there. So. Thanks for tuning in and checking out my channel. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Hope you have a blessed one.